Hello and welcome to the Men's Little 500 preview show. I'm Mary Kate Hamilton. And I'm Josh Eastern. I will be on play by play next Saturday for the 68th running of the Men's Little 500, along with IU alum and former IUSF race director Jordan Bailey and Mary Kate on sidelines. Mary Kate, how do you feel with the race being just a week away now? I am so excited. This is the first race that I am broadcasting, and Josh, I know it's your second, but it's really a wide open field this year. Of course, we have those strong legacy teams that are going to come back and make another run at it, but we also have some new up and coming teams that are going to be really fun to watch. So it's going to be a great race. Yeah, speaking of those legacy teams, we will talk with Black Key Bulls, defending champions from last year in this show. We'll also talk with Pylam Defy, who qualified fifth making just their third race appearance since the 1950s, and, and then they're in the fifth spot. Should be a very fun race. Cutters is on the pole, another one of those legacy teams. But Sigma Phi Epsilon is red hot coming off a winning spring series and earning that white jersey, placing three riders in the top 10 ITTs and placing first at Team Pursuit. I caught up with Sig App to see how they're preparing for race day. Three riders in the top 10 of ITTs, the winner of Missing Out and Team Pursuit Champs. It's been quite the spring for SIGEP Cycling. Still, this team has higher expectations. We're all returners, we're all hungry this year, um, and I think we're showing that in all of our training and it's really coming through in events. It's really nice having three guys throughout the winter and even in the fall that can push each other. They've been successful nearly every time they've taken to the track this spring. The three riders in the top 10 of ITTs shows how dangerous this SIGEP team can be. It certainly looks good and that was exactly our goal was to put three in the top 10 um, just to kind of show the depth that we have um, and it kind of gives us a lot of uh, weapons come race day that we can use. SIGEP's top three riders are all upperclassmen. However, Ben Harris is the only rider with actual race experience. He says that will help him. I really gained a lot from last year. Just I feel much more comfortable on the track, much more confident um, in my abilities. Really since winning the race in 2015, we've kind of had a strong legacy um, team dynamic since then. You know, alumni are still around the team helping us out, uh, which helps new guys like me a lot. You know, although I haven't raced, I feel like I have quite a bit of experience under my belt. SIGEP will be starting from the fourth spot. Can the white jersey win the race for the second straight year? We don't want to leave the race knowing that we could have left something else out there. Um, so we're just going to put 100% out there and, and see what happens. SIGEP isn't the only team going into this weekend with confidence. The Blackie Bulls are the Little 500's returning champions and they look to defend their title this year. Today we're lucky to have Kevin Mangle and Noah Voiles join us in studio to talk Little 500. Thank you guys for being here. Glad to be here. So defending champions, what is the pressure coming into this race? Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure. There's a pretty big target on our back being in the yellow jersey this year. Uh, and, you know, we'd like to defend the title. And uh, we're definitely going to race uh, the best race that we can. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was talking with Xavier at the track earlier to this. Xavier Martinez, if, if, if people don't know. <laughs> uh, they, they, they should know. But anyway, uh, I was talking about him. and He was saying you guys aren't really maybe trying to repeat. You're just trying to win again. How much is that the mentality to kind of maybe take some pressure off you guys? Right. So each year the race is different. Um, personally, I view this race as just another year. It's hard to kind of play off the year before when uh, every year, like I said, is so different. So it's kind of just looking ahead each year and each race is a different entity. And so this year, uh, completely different than the year before. So just going with that. And like you said, every year is different. What are some of the differences with your team and maybe even just the field in general this year from last year? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, growing up and finally being a senior in Little Five and getting to know so many more people. And it's just everyone knows each other. So you kind of know your competition a lot better. You're a lot better friends with people. And it's just a whole other ball game from when you were a younger rider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, just going off year to year, you know, you have uh, the seniors that graduate, so you have new riders that you're bringing in, uh, new rookies, um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of variables with that that play into uh, to like the logistics of the race. Mm -hmm. One thing that's though pretty similar is you guys are in the eighth spot again. Mm -hmm. Is that how how that happened? Yeah, well, calls was a it was an interesting day. We were hoping to do really well, but uh, of course the weather was uh, it was interesting that day. So. To say the least. To say the least, yes. So, we, yeah, I mean, <laughs> with qualls and the snow and the sleet, you know, we just, we went out there and had as much fun as we could. And honestly, it was, it was a blast riding mm -hmm. in the snow. You know, even though we didn't get that pole position, you know, eighth is just fine with us. I mean, when, when you guys went, I, I remember it was probably the worst it was all day. Yeah. The, <laughs> it was the thick of it. How did sure. that kind of play with your heads at all? 
I, we kind of went into it with an open mind. Uh, we knew the weather was going to be bad, uh, so we just went with the flow. It's kind of like riding through an Arctic slushy is <laughs> the best way to describe <laughs> it. It was just such a thick consistency yeah. on the track. But and now you mentioned earlier you had seniors graduate and Charlie Hammond. Mm -hmm. What kind of a loss was that, and how are you guys looking to replace that this year? Well, it's tough to to live up to the standards of Charlie. He's, <laughs> he's a very intense guy. Um, but you know we uh, we were prepared. You know we've we put in the, put in the work, put in the training. Uh, you know watched plenty of race tape uh, to kind of get the the tactics point of view down. Um, and uh, yeah, we miss Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> it's always hard to lose a graduating senior, but um, it's nice we still all stay in touch. So that's good as well. Good. Your your coach Ryan Knapp won mm -hmm. both races last year. He was the he first did. guy to ever do that. He won with with Theta and then with with you guys. What has his role been in, in kind of helping you guys once again this year? So Ryan's a great coach. Um, what's nice is he is a very avid cyclist himself as well. So he gets to go out on rides with us. He's, he lives in Bloomington, so um, whenever we go for long rides, he's able to join with us and um, talk about the race, talk about school, whatever we need to. A uh, very positive influence for us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it definitely helps having him in Bloomington and having, uh, having someone He's also an alumni, so uh, you know having someone to go to with any any type of problems that we're having, whether it be on the bike or or off the bike. Now your coach is an alumni, and I know you guys have a lot of alumni support. What is it like to kind of have that name of Black Key Bulls and live up to the legacy that has been set before you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a family. You know, everyone within uh, the BKB family has gone through the same. Uh, process of the race and school so everyone understands what it's like to be a student and a rider um, but what it comes down to is uh, school and the great group of guys that is Black Eagles. Yeah I mean I definitely view the alumni as uh, as older brothers uh, in a sense you know they, they they'll put you in in your place if you're doing something wrong but they're also there for you and to support you and uh, I mean they're they're just as happy when we win uh, as, as we are yeah. so. When, when you guys wake up on race day, what, what's the mentality? What is going through your heads from, from the moment you wake up till 2.40 when the race starts? Can it start already? Yeah. <laughs> like the, the 2 o'clock, it just seems like forever. Mm -hmm. I remember last year just sitting on the edge of my bed, just looking at the clock, watching the minutes yeah. pass, and it just seems like forever. Right. Yeah, that's the crazy thing because, you know, all of campus is partying all week. And it's like <laughs> you just want it to be the race. You just want to get out there and start riding. Uh, so the day of the race is a long-awaited drink your morning coffee and just kind of sit and wait around until it finally comes. So what's the excitement level now? We're, what, now a week away, less than that from the race? It's, it's starting to sink in. <laughs> it's definitely. Yeah, you're sitting in class just looking out the window, waiting for it to be Saturday. <laughs> but very much a lot of anticipation just wanting to get to it. Yeah, you have all these check marks uh, that you have to you know, check off the box with, you know, the, the, you got the race day briefing, the final four cards uh, turning in, uh, lap counter meeting, I mean, all types of stuff going on uh, that you have to make sure you attend and uh, so that your team doesn't get a race day penalty. So it's just kind of focusing on uh, checking off those boxes. Mm -hmm. So, Well, guys, thank you very much for coming in. Thank and, you, guys. And good, Absolutely. good luck on race day. Should be another great day for race. Hopefully the the weather cooperates Hopefully. this time around. <laughs> Very much hoping so. Well, now that April has come around, teams have been training all year long for this. Let's take a look at how one of these teams trains while no one's watching. December and January are not months made for biking. The snow and cold came to Bloomington this year and biking outside wasn't necessarily an option. So let's bring you into the lab. The little 500 race may be nearly four months away but for beta cycling, the preparation is well underway. Right now we're kind of, you know, transitioning from our long bay season. We took a trip down to Florida, Panama City Beach, did a lot of miles there, and obviously the weather's not too great down here in January in Bloomington, so we have to spend a lot of time inside, um, just grinding it out on the rollers. Yeah, it's definitely not ideal. You know, the, the rides definitely seem longer when you're in here, but, uh, you know, some things we do, we, we put on race tape or movies or, and we listen to a lot of music. And uh, as Jack mentioned, it's, it's, it's really important to, um, you know, have each other in here. The gates to Bill Armstrong Stadium may be closed right now, but in about a month's time, the riders from Beta will be ready to get off those rollers and get on to the track. We have about a month now, you know, before the track opens. And for us, that's go time. We're just trying to get as fit as possible right now, 
get our leg strength up, get our cardio up, so when that track opens, we can hit it hard and uh, you know be one of the fastest teams out there. Last year, Beta Cycling finished fourth overall and not on the podium. This year, they will look to be equally as competitive, but with a common goal in mind. Number one goal is to enjoy it. You know, that's that's what you appreciate a lot more when uh, you're cooped up in here, and then you can finally get out on a nice day. So when we're out, you know, we really try to have a good time. You know, we're all in better spirits. Those may be their goals for now, but come April, winning the race will be their number one goal. The spring has seen a few unsuspecting teams making a name for themselves. Pylam Defy is a team to be reckoned with, placing fifth at Qualls. Today, we have Adam Kelty and Anthony Lemon in the studio. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. So, fifth place at Qualls. Obviously, the weather conditions weren't ideal. What was kind of going through your guys' heads in that moment? I think mentally uh, we came prepared. It was cold, but uh, the team decided to go with naked legs. <laughs> so uh, kind of just show our toughness uh, a little bit. But uh, we hid in the bathrooms like most teams to stay warm until leading up to it. Our track roll, I think, really helped uh, kind of set the track and kind of put a nice little pace down for us to really get good tr transitions. I mean, the, the weather conditions obviously weren't ideal, but going into that, you, you mentioned that toughness. Is that something maybe this team can kind of hone on as being one of those tougher teams come race day? Yeah, so it's like when we've been out there practicing, whether it's rain, snow, sun, or hail, I guess, we're usually out there as if it's the track's still open. And we've just kind of like gotten used to riding in terrible conditions and good conditions alike. Now, this is your guys' third year s racing in the race since being like reestablished. Um, how have you guys been able to build up this team again to the point where you can place fifth at Qualls? I think it's just the mentality of the guys and uh, our coach Barry uh, has really uh, taken us by the hand and kind of just showed us the way. Uh, he, kinda, he kind of tells us what we need to eat and he feeds us so uh, <laughs> we kind of looked for him to inspire us. Uh, we kind of set the foundation uh, back in 2016 and uh, the guys have just really, uh, we just really come together as a team. What's on the table then? What's on the table is uh, probably we're probably the e most easiest going team. Uh, <laughs> we're probably the dark horse in the field, just uh, outside looking in. Uh, so uh, we're looking to be sneaky come race day and uh, hopefully come in with the top five spot. For, for people that may not know who Pi Lambda Phi is, how would you guys maybe define your team? Um, I guess we're a young team and we're kind of looking because we just started, like you said, three years ago. And it's like two years ago we were basically coached by a student coach and now we've official coach and moved up through the rankings and I guess kind of like the underdog team in a sense. Now you guys are the underdog team but you have four seniors. What is this team going to look like moving forward after this year? Uh, we got a few good riders in the pipeline. One of our guys are rookies this year is looking really good and we've had we had like an interest meeting a few weeks ago and several of our teammates after that fifth place calls were <laughs> psyched about coming out <laughs> yeah. to the race. They're like wow Pylam like bike team is something now. Is it at all intimidating that you guys are going to be going up against the likes of, of Black Eagles and SIGEP and SAE that have had that have a track record and history in this race? I guess the best way to describe that would be the practice start yesterday, um, or the practice race. I was there in the basically the second row and looking around, I was like, "Wow, these teams usually like win it every year." And you're nervous for the first few like pace laps, but as soon as that like um, gun sounds and you're off the front, it's all nerves are away. So, and and you guys, uh, it'll be interesting to see come come race day what the weather conditions are like. But you said you d it didn't really matter what the weather conditions are. So on on race day, when you wake up in the morning, what's it what's it going to be like? What's going to be going through your guys' heads? Uh, probably a lot of confusion. <laughs> uh, we like to make jokes about each other, so it's uh, whoever's day it is to get picked on, we'll probably pick on them. Uh, that's how we usually get the day rolling. Uh, looking at the weather. Uh, we come to play no matter what. Uh, hopefully it's sunny. That's what we're planning on. But if it rains, uh, we feel like that could help our team also, um, affecting other teams with the track. So, What's the excitement level at? I mean, I'm sure you guys just got to be rearing to go. Oh, absolutely. And it just like every day gets closer, you just get more and more excited. And every day going to the track, you start seeing all this stuff set up and the whole environment there just changes. And especially during little five week when it's like everybody's kind of rest week, it just you're just ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole campus changes. You can see it, uh, especially with the getting sunny outside. Everybody gets revved up for Little 500. It is the greatest college weekend. I uh, can't really say that unless you're like really in it and really part of it. But it, 
it's something special to see. Mm -hmm. Now, you, there's so much history in this race. Do you guys kind of embrace that history and, and be like, wow, I, I get to kind of almost leave a legacy here at, at Indiana? Yeah, it's something special. Actually, uh, we had two teams previously, uh, one in 1951 when the race started and one in 1955. And our coach actually showed us a picture yesterday of our first team. So it's kind of weird to see how they started and where we're at now with different bikes and kind of different uh, speed levels. Mm -hmm. Now come race day, how are you guys going to control those nerves, pre-race jitters? I imagine us playing a lot of euchre. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're big, we're big in the euchre right now, so okay. uh, our favorite point is the ninth, so we get to play in the barn a little bit, and uh, everybody gets to make the moo sounds and uh, pretend like we're chickens, so uh, we'll probably play euchre, a lot of stretching, and probably just a lot of joking around. Our team is probably not the most serious team out there, so I think that's what keeps it, keeps it light and uh, our clubhouse. So I who's guess. the best Euchre player out of the team? Ooh. <laughs> I'd probably have to say uh, our other senior, Evan Crooks. Uh -huh. uh, he <laughs> when he has no cards, he always calls it, and somehow he ends up winning. So uh, that kid is something. He's amazing. Hey, just throw strategy right out the door, and we're all just kind of like, how do you play against that? <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see if those Euchre skills can translate to the track next Saturday. Yeah, it will be interesting. Guys, thank you very much for coming in. and. Another team that is also up there in the qualifying order is Delta Chi. I met up with them earlier this spring to talk about their strategy. In 2017, Delta Chi cycling was a major surprise. They qualified 30th, but managed to finish 12th. That was with only three riders. It really kind of changes your perspective of, oh my gosh, these guys really just did a 200 lap race with three people. And uh, I think now, in my eyes, it's a lot more impressive. Um, and it was impressive last year to see it, and now to even kind of feel it a little bit is really neat. Nick Folletti was a spectator for the last two seasons. On the track, Abel Barrera Duran was a key factor. Coming into this year, adding a fourth rider is a big boost to the team. We are just that much more confident going into this year, not really doubting ourselves as much. And the, even though like there's the pressure maybe repeating what we did last year, it's much less so uh, stressful in a sense of like not knowing if we're going to be able to replicate something like it. If we can't have a full team like last year, we know we've been in that spot before and can overcome it. It's been 25 years since the last Little 500 win by Delta Chi. There's plenty of history within the program and it is not lost on the riders this year. History plays a huge part in this team. I think um, I think the team is what it is because of the history. You know, you it's really special to be able to walk into the house every day and you walk by a trophy case filled with eight little five championships. I mean, you just don't really get to see that anywhere else. Our history is actually one of the reasons that I decided that this was the team I wanted to join. I said this is a team that has a lot of history in the sport, a lot of history in the um, little 500, and it really pulled me to the house. Barrera Duran says people are starting to buy into the team again. They've won eight titles, mostly in the 70s, and they are finally giving alumni a reason to be excited again. Most alumni have a job, kids, other things to focus on, and when you haven't been um, so successful for a number of years, you really have to convince them that we're somebody to believe in. And uh, I think we've done that. Uh, but that also comes with an additional amount of pressure um, going into, into the race because not only do you know that you have the history, but now you know that the history is also starting to support you again. The motivation is there, and the Delta Kais will be looking to make some noise in 2018. To be able to ride for all the people that came before us and to try and set our own legacy and to ride for all the people who are going to come after us, that's something that's hugely motivating, not just for myself, but I know for the entire team. This was a crazy spring series with weather playing a huge role. Josh, what can you tell us about qualifications this year? Well, this year's pole team is cutters, but their time would have qualified 26 last year, which has come to show you how tough those weather conditions were on that Saturday in March. But as you can see, we have teams like SAE, SIG EP, who won Spring Series. All the big guns are up at the top, but there are some underdogs in there as well. Absolutely. We have all of our usual suspects up there, but we do have some newcomers. Pi Lambda Phi snuck into that top five. We had Kappa Sigma. So we definitely have a few newer names that kind of really did show out at Qualls. Mm -hmm. Another one of those underdog teams is is Forrest. They're in the ninth spot. They've had a good run of, of years here in the past few years, so it will be interesting to see where a team like that shapes up. And now next up, of course, was the individual time trials, and unlike Qualls, we had perfect conditions. It was a 
really great day for it, and the bikers were able to put up some really fast times. Yeah, Joe Krahulik obviously taking that top time. We have guys like Xavier Martinez, but Sig Epp placing three riders in the top 10 might have been the most impressive. There are a bunch of teams that are in the top 10 that also uh, had three riders in the top 25. So all those teams up at the top really showing out on that ITT day. And then we had missing outs and team pursuits. Which teams found themselves at the top of the leaderboard? Well, it was Sig Epp, Charlie Hicks taking it Sig home again. again. I mean, they just <laughs> were a, a, a steamroller here during this spring series. They won spring series. They're in the fourth spot coming into the race this year. So that's a team definitely that has put up some numbers in, in spring series. Absolutely. Well, while the spring series events certainly do give us an idea of which teams to watch out for, we know that on race day, anything is possible. And Josh, I know we're still a week away, but do we have any early weather predictions? about the big day on Saturday? I mean, you know how the weather goes here in Indiana, but looking <laughs> at the extended forecast, it looks like it is going to be nice. It will be a good day for racing, but as we've seen here in the past couple days, we haven't gotten rain lately, mm -hmm. and during the, the practice start yesterday, we saw a few a few bumps along the road, let's just say that. Yes. It, was a, it was a dry track, which makes it kind of tough for some riders. With a little uh, precipitation, that makes it a faster track for racing. And that might be better for the riders come race day. Absolutely. Well, we will not know what it's going to be until we wake <laughs> up that morning because we know with Indiana weather, it changes all the time. But that is going to wrap it up for us here today. And we hope you tune in to the Little 500 on Saturday, April 21st. We'll see you next week. For Mary-Kate Hamilton, Jordan Bailey, I'm Josh Eastern.